So after Midnight Gospel, I was kind of at a loss for what to watch. People recommended I watch that show, and I had no idea that it was going to take me so far. I thought it was just going to be kind of a zany cartoon. I didn't know it would lead me to rethink my life and have meaningful conversations about things and all, all this stuff. So after that finished, I'm like, what do I do next? Then I happened to notice that Avatar The Last Airbender was released on Netflix, and it seems to be doing quite well on that platform. So I asked a bunch of friends, you know, what if I do Avatar The Last Airbender? And all of them said the exact same thing. They said, You've never seen Avatar The Last Airbender? What's wrong with you? They didn't say what's wrong with you, but that's how I felt. I always thought Avatar The Last Airbender was just a kid's cartoon, and I never really gave it much thought. But I've made that mistake in the past. I feel drawn to it. I feel like it has something for me. Usually when I feel that way, my instincts are correct. So we'll just see how far we go, and if I enjoy it, I'll keep doing it, and if you guys enjoy it, I'll keep doing it, and if not, then we can just move on. Alright, let's, let's see what Avatar The Last Airbender has to offer. By the way, I know nothing about the show except for this part. I've seen the intro, like, one minute. There's four nations, and the Fire Nation's bad, and M. Night Shyamalan made a terrible movie about it. That's the only thing I know about the show. Only the Avatar mastered all four elements, but when the world needed him most, he vanished. The Avatar will return to save the world. I like that. <laughs> I like how nice and concise that intro was. That was great. I got everything I need to know. Let's go. Let's fight the Fire, fire Nation. It's just appeals to everything that I want in life. Everybody wants to have magic powers, control the universe. It's not magic, it's water bending. And it's, yeah, yeah. it's magic. It's definitely magic. I'm not the one who makes muscles at myself every time I see my reflection in the water. I feel attacked. Hmm? Came out of the, he's born from ice, that's interesting. It's kind of like how Goku was born from a rock. Was it a rock? Goku was born from a rock, right? I need to ask you something. Mm -hmm. What? Your phone Please, number. <laughs> come closer. What is it? It's gonna be a fake out. Will you go penguin sledding with me? Yeah. Uh. <gasps> Abba! Wake up, buddy! So I'm already noticing I'm getting a lot of Goku vibes. It's not just Goku, it's like a lot of main characters. It's a common thing you see in a lot of cartoons, especially ones aimed at young kids, where the, the main character is kind of like, he's he's innocent, good and innocent. You know what I mean? Just in the first 10 to 15 seconds of seeing Aang, I think his name is Aang, right? You get a lot of his feeling already. And you also can see quite clearly that this is going to be a romance between Aang and uh, whatever her name is. This is Appa, my flying bison. Right. Kind of like the flying Nimbus. Is it wrong that I'm like just seeing Dragon Ball and everything? It's powerful wind bending. I'm Aang. You're an airbender. Sure am. You guys just knowing stuck. stories and narrative, something bad is about to happen. Which is going to set these guys on a journey. Oh? Can they fly? Oh. I was gonna say I was gonna talk about how cool it is to fly, but that wasn't that, that wasn't was it. Truly amazing. Yeah, I was gonna say, can windbenders fly? Because if they can, that just doesn't seem fair to Why the other elements. At me like that? What can the other people do? Wouldn't you just want to have the flying power? <laughs> and couldn't like you just move water using wind? Like if you just have the wind power, couldn't you just use like the wind to make waves? I don't know. Am I overthinking it? Yeah, I am. I don't need any calming tea. I need to <laughs> That's avatar. great. I think you do need tea, dude. You definitely need calming tea. What is calming tea? You won't find him. Your father, grandfather, and great-grandfather all tried and failed. Oof. Because their honor didn't hinge on the Avatar's capture. Mine does. This coward's hundred years in hiding are over. This is a plot line, not a plot line, a trope, I guess you'd say. And I don't mean it in a bad way. I just mean something that, it, that occurs frequently in literature and fiction that I'm particularly sensitive to, it hits me very strongly, carrying the failures of your ancestors. It's something I never really thought about when I was younger, but as I get older, the more I think about that, the more I I feel like you carry on the lives that your your family did in a way, and your their mistakes often become your own mistakes in ways that are not even apparent to you. And so it becomes a, a struggle to like make your own identity and do your own thing and not not carry that or to carry it and kind of redeem it. Right now I'm playing Mass Effect and I noticed this plotline there too because the character Ashley Williams, she comes from a long line of disgraced military veterans 
and she's trying to redeem herself from that. Your parents have certain things that they want and don't accomplish, and you may end up treading in their footsteps if you're not careful. It's really scary to think about. What is this, a weapon? You can't stab anything with this. It's not for stabbing. Damn, it's he can like bending. force power things. Oh yeah, you could fly like that, right? If you have a thing, you control the wind. I'm hoping the other powers are cool in ways that I'm not anticipating. Oh, they're fires. Firebenders. That's interesting because they don't strike me as being evil. They just seem like they have their own thing that they're doing. Which is good. I hope that means that this, this show takes a very nuanced approach to character development. That's a good sign. But first, I must finish my roast duck. Um, um, um. A fire navy ship and a very bad memory for my people. How does the water tribe lose to the fire tribe? If you want to be a bender, you have to let go of fear. That's tough, man. Damn, just let go of fear just like that? A hundred years! I can't believe it. Maybe somehow there's a bright side to all this. I did get to meet you. Damn, this gets smooth. <laughs> now we could all be in danger. Don't blame That's why you're not a waterbender, because you're so afraid of everything. Aang's brought us something we haven't had in a long time. Hope. Fun. Oh. Fun. We can't fight firebenders with fun. I think it best if the airbender leaves. This is why your tribe sucks and you live in a then piece I of ice. Too. I haven't cleaned my room in a hundred years. It's probably that squatters by now. <laughs> that was brutal. Let's put some water on him. You guys suck. I'm sorry, but the water village sucks. They're such losers. I'm sure they're nice people, but like you just lost to fire. You're what? What do you two think you're doing? Answering the call on the hero's journey. You have a long journey ahead of you. It's been so long since I've had hope. Hope, I told you, I knew it was hope. Wow, that's cool. Wind just seems so much cooler than everything else. It's like not even fair. I keep saying that, but I really I like want to see what they do with the other powers. Like what the hell is Earth gonna be? Like an earthquake? The end? Can they make dirt fly? But if they make dirt fly, that's wind. Or is it? He also gets super speed. Does he get super strength too? He just has so many different powers. It's crazy. It's not fair. Damn. At least the guy can jump. Dead. It's not magic. It's water bending. Damn. How many times have to tell you, idiot? world's been waiting for the avatar to return and finally put an end to this war and how am i going to do that do you guys know the hero's journey that thing the hero gets the call to adventure and then he has to resist the call which is like he doesn't want to do it or he's scared of it or something like that so ang's resisting the call why i don't know that's what the monks told me well if we go to the north pole you can master waterbending so this is going to be the show he's got to learn all the different Sokka, elements then back over here we'll ride the hog monkeys. They don't like people riding. Childish innocence. Is that it? Oh, by quick. That was a long episode, but it felt like nothing. My thoughts about the show, first of all, it's definitely for kids. Like, it's a kid's show, which is not a bad thing. You can get a lot of things out of kid shows. If it's done well, everyone can get something out of it. The kid in me immediately just wants to have these powers. I mean, like, who wouldn't want to be a bender? And, like, who wouldn't want to be a wind bender? The other ones just suck so far. So one of the tropes I'm noticing very clearly is, like, childhood innocent. Having the innocence of a child and being very pure of heart, as they would say a Dragon Ball. But balancing that out with being very capable. The innocent, pure-hearted part makes them likable and also relatable. And then being really capable makes them admirable. So the two things together work really well. And I think Aang was set up really nicely in the first episode as someone who has all those qualities. He's someone likable, he's very chill, cool, innocent, pure, kind, but badass. The juxtaposition of those is what makes a really strong lead. It's done often for a reason, and that reason is it's compelling. Then you have pretty standard, like, first episode setup. Although there was no tragedy, I guess because it's a kid's show, like, it's not so dark. I was expecting the fire tribe to come in and, like, murder the water tribe, but know your audience, I guess. But yeah, otherwise they're on a call to adventure, like, you know, Lord of the Rings and, and Dragon Ball, you know, to get the crew together. There's a catalyst to kind of push them out into the world to go on a journey. Throughout the journey, they're going to discover themselves and 
come into contact with major evil and overcome that evil and learn something in the process. Which is good stuff. It's good stuff. Like, that's always good. <laughs> you know, like I said, there's a reason why this comes up a lot. It's because that's good. It works. I didn't feel super drawn to the first episode just because, like, what's new? But it's it's only the pilot. You can't expect full depth from something in one episode because they're just trying to get you in. There's not much to react to because it's pretty straightforward. But yeah, I'll keep watching it. I'm enjoying it. Uh, maybe I'll see you for episode two. If I'll see what kind of feedback this gets.